Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Can It Take a K26? The show where I take a variety of Nerf Blasters and see if they can be upgraded using a K26 spring. I am your host, Captain Xavier. Our first contestant is the Recon CS6, so named of course because it was part of the clip system and came with a six round magazine. Yes, I'm aware, Nerf refers to them as clips. I refer to them as magazines because that is what they are. If you prefer to call them a clipazine, you go right ahead. The Recon was originally released in 2008 as part of the N-Strike line, but the original versions were recalled because the plunger tube was actually external and was catching children's hands. I do actually have one of the recalled versions, but I'm not going to modify it for reasons of posterity. It was then re-released in 2009 as part of Walmart's Black Friday Red series, which is, of course, very rare and I've never seen one. A clear version was released in 2010 as a Target exclusive. The Sonic series was released in 2010 as a Toys R Us exclusive. And in 2011, the Gear Up series was released, but for some reason, apparently, the Gear Up Recon was never available in the United States, which is why they're so incredibly rare. The Recon was, of course, released with a stock that held a magazine, a little light that attached to rail, a barrel extension, and a flip-up sight. It also, of course, came with the six-round magazine. But what we want to know is, can it take a K26? Well, it is a reverse plunger blaster, so in all probability, no. But we're going to check just to make sure. Maybe we'll get lucky, and the K26 will happen to be the exact right size. All right, we are in. You can see the internals. Not particularly exciting. And, as expected, no, it cannot take a K26 because the K26 is actually too small. It will not fit around the plunger tube. If I wanted to get crazy, I could try to do the uh, power stock mod where they actually cut out you know, the back of the plunger rod and uh, put extra spring into that extended back into the stock and pushed on the back of the plunger rod, but I'm not going to because I'm just not interested. There were mods that were made. Orange Mod Works of Chaos came out with several kits for the recon. Um, but right about the time that really got taking off, of course, our next contestant came out. So we're just gonna button this back up and move right on to the next contestant. All right, well, that's a no for the recon. On to the next contestant. Our next contestant is, of course, the Nerf Retaliator. The Retaliator came out in 2012 as part of the N-Strike Elite line and was, of course, the replacement to the recon. It was then re-released in 2014 as part of the Elite XD lineup with the uh, white uh, shell as well as some internal improvements that was uh, released during the New York Toy Fair. It also came with a stock and a barrel, but rather than a sight and a light, it came with a foregrip. It also came with the first 12-round magazine. As with most of the blasters that came out in the N-Strike Elite series, the Retaliator is a direct plunger version of its predecessor. So let us see if this direct plunger system can take a K26. All right, so as you can see, it's got the direct plunger, which is much more susceptible to being modded. Other than that, most of the internals are pretty much the same. So we're just going to see if we can, in fact, just slip a K26 in here. All right, well, K26 will fit. Let's see if it'll function. This uh, section here that holds the spring is a little bit too small, so... We're going to Dremel it. Good enough. Okay. Well, I didn't think so. Well. The moral of the story is, no, the Retaliator cannot take K26, but for slightly different reasons. In this case, the spring is too big around. It's actually bigger around, quite a bit bigger around than the original spring. And it's actually catching on the plunger tube, or plunger rod catch 
as it's coming out and is getting stuck and uh, is therefore not working properly. I wouldn't be surprised if it also could not get sufficient compression given how much space there is in there. Yeah. There was no way that was ever going to get enough compression anyway, so... So, that's another no. Now, hopefully the uh, dremeling that I did doesn't uh, befoul the gun, because that would be a tragic waste of a perfectly good retaliator. Well, the good news, it does not appear to have fouled it. Uh, the retaliator cannot take a K-26. On to the next contestant. Our final contestant is, of course, the Recon Mark II, or MK2, which I assume stands for Mark. The Recon Mark II was first released in 2016 as part of the N-Strike Modulus line. It is also direct plunger, so one could argue that it's the uh, replacement for the Retaliator, though it's actually more a true new replacement of the Recon, thus Recon Mark II. Uh, it was released with a stock and a barrel attachment and a six-round magazine, and is the first of the Recon line, as it were, to have any rail on the side, and it only has it on the right side, which, you know, us lefties are mildly annoyed by, but at least it is still an ambidextrous trigger release, or mag release. The original Recon Mark IIs were uh, flawed in a number of ways. They had some additional uh, decoration, as it were, on this front plate, which prevented you from being able to attach certain barrel attachments. The magwell also did not accommodate uh, any of the larger capacity magazines. They, they wouldn't lock in properly. You could really only put a 6 or a 12 in. Uh, 18s and uh, the drums didn't fit in at all, but they re-released it uh, after, I don't know if they actually did a full recall, but they did re-release it and the newer versions had that solved. Uh, I picked up this version, this one, at Goodwill and am very pleased to announce that it is the newer version. So it has the completely front plate, which also means that it doesn't actually have a locking point for the uh, barrel attachments, which is slightly odd, but it will take drums, so I tested it. I also discovered that I was not the first person to open up this, uh, this blaster. Somebody else had, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but they had managed to screw it up. Uh, the trigger, one of the locks in here, the spring was missing, and it actually, it actually fell out while I was trying to figure out what was jammed. Uh, and as a result, the trigger was never unlocked. So even when the gun was primed, you couldn't pull the trigger. Uh, I have opened it up and fixed it so it does work, but now we're going to open it back up and see if it can take a K26. Alright, once inside you can see that it's basically identical to the Retaliator in uh, all functional respects. And as such, it's not going to be able to take K26. For the same reason, a larger spring is going to hit the plunger catch. I wonder though. Yeah, that's not going to work. I was going to say, well, maybe if you pulled the trigger when you pulled it back, you could get enough compression. But I remembered, recalled that uh, in addition to being hitting this trigger catch, uh, there is no way to get enough compression in this back area with a sufficiently long K26 spring. So, uh, but one way or the other, it's just not going to work. So, unfortunately, we're just going to button this one back up. Someday I would definitely like to do upgrades on um, a Retaliator and definitely a Recon Mark II. I just really like the design of the handle. So I would love to build a Pump Grip Recon Mark II at some point. But not today, as I do not have the parts. Alright, there you have it. Recon Mark II. Another no. Let's take a look at the scores. All right, for those of you keeping score at home, that was a no for the Recon CS6. That was a no for the Retaliator. And that was a no for the Recon Mark II. Unfortunately, the internals of these blasters are such that you cannot put a K26 into any of them. Uh, there may be ways to modify them so that they could, but in all likelihood, you're just going to have to find a spring with a uh, smaller 
outside diameter. So sadly not a particularly uh, exciting episode, but all of these blasters have been requested at one point or another, so I figure I would get them out of the way. Stay tuned for next week's episode. We are going to continue with the whole magazine-fed series. There are a number of blasters that have been requested, and I'm going to get to as many as I can this series, so... Stay tuned. Any comments, concerns, idea, if I missed some obvious reason why these should be able to take K-26, go ahead and put it in the comments below and I may revisit it. And as always, thank you for watching.